Yu Ding from Baidu X Labs today is securely joining the fray to rustily enclave your bits to behave. That's a big deal for security. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Eugene from Baidu X Lab, and um, I'm coming from California. So it's a 10 hour jet lag. I'm really sleepy now. So give me some uh, clap. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, uh, this is a joint work with my colleagues, Duan uh, Ran, Li Long, and some other colleagues. I want to uh, express my appreciation to them because they really did help me a lot. And uh, first, let's talk about, uh, about myself. I'm a uh, security research scientist, spending my last 10 years on exploit attacks and defense. And uh, I've been working on uh, autonomous driving project recently uh, for the Apollo, pro Apollo project in Baidu. And uh, I'm in charge of auditing the C and C++ code. And uh, uh, since the December 20, uh, 2000, 2016, I've been diving into Intel SGX and Rust. And uh, during the two years of my Rust life, uh, our team become more and more ambitious. In, in the beginning, we only want to um, bring Intel SGX to Rust, but on the road, we find that we can bring the entire uh, TLS stack to Rust, and by the help of uh, Russell, we wrap, wrap, it, wrap it to a uh, drop-in replacement to, uh, for OpenSSL, and um, furthermore, we implement a set of uh, Linux user-space applications, and we name, name them as Metalink and Metalock. They're both uh, open source on GitHub and, and can be used directly in IoT devices and Android systems, and uh, Baidu product teams like them very much. Um, this is my outline for today. So this, this is the first time I talked to uh, the Rust community instead of the security guys. So I will spend a little more time on Intel SGX and uh, discuss why Rust is SGX's best friend. So next, I will use uh, easy, uh, the most easy uh, sample print line as an example to show how I support print line in uh, SGX. So next is the most challenge, challenging part, the libstd, and we port the whole entire libstd to SGX, uh, named as uh, SGX underscore trusted STD. And uh, the last two uh, sections tells you how to port uh, more queries to SGX and uh, show some masterpieces already built uh, in SGX. So what is SGX? SGX is a um, uh, CPU mode which can protect data uh, and authorize the data access, uh, which means that, mm, for example, in the past, the OS kernel and uh, VMM can get access to the application's memory uh, without notice the application. But with, with uh, SGX enabled, the application can protect its own memory in the small yellow boxes uh, named as SGX Enclave. And uh, in this way, no matter how the uh, OS tries, he cannot get read or write uh, access to the Enclave memory. This is enforced by the uh, Intel's memory encryption engine. The memory encryption engine is implemented as hardware in, inside the uh, CPU and it guarantees the um, uh, mem uh, access control by the page, uh, paging information. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this is how the uh, um, SGS Enclave pro protects application's memory. Uh, but it has a strong limitation it, um, because the, uh, the supported memory size is quite small. Uh, on each platform, uh, only 128 gigabytes of physical memory can be used for uh, the SG uh, SGX Enclave. But don't worry, uh, Intel has implemented a, uh, a software, uh, a page fault based 
a mapping, a mapping mechanism which can swap in and swap out the memories between trusted 128 gigabytes and untrusted what, uh, no matter how much memory you have. But it will be a little bit slow if you trigger a page fault and the kernel driver uh, get, get the page in and decrypt. Yeah, that, that's a little bit uh, more performance overhead. So, um, so how do the SGX enclave works? Uh, normally, when a, uh, a, uh, an SGX application can be split to two parts, the untrusted part of an app and the trusted part of an app. Uh, in the untrusted part of app, the uh, Linux thread keep execution until a uh, E call, which goes through the call gate of a uh, SGS enclave and uh, start execution in the trusted part or SGS enclave and final, fi finally returns to the uh, uh, untrusted part of app. So it works like a uh, block sys blocked syscall, but it does not uh, uh, escalate the privilege to ring zero. It's, it only keeps its own privilege in ring three. So um, SGX uh, provide not only the memory encryption engine, but also the uh, remote attestation ability, which means that everyone can remote, remotely attest if the SGX enclave is launched correctly. The code inside the enclave is the one I want to uh, launch. This is guaranteed by the um, uh, CPU mechanism, the CPU will automatically calculate the SHA sum of the loaded enclave memory and returns you a, uh, uh, the result. And you, during the compil compilation, you can calculate the uh, hash value by yourself and you can verify if, the, if these two values are equal, are, are identical. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the a hash value calculated by hardware is, is signed by Intel, so uh, you can verify if the report is correctly signed by Intel. If the report is valid and the hash, uh, and the hash value is identical, so you can trust the, uh, um, uh, the enclave and put your secrets to the enclave and start a calculation. So uh, the remote attestation mechanism can guarantee if a uh, SGX enclave is initialized correctly and whether the platform satisfies the security requirements. Um, what is the platform in SGX? The platform means CPU plus uh, the motherboard plus um, no, 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 no more. Uh, because uh, in, in some version of uh, CPU, there are some SGX bugs such as priv privilege escalation and it should be fixed by microcode upgrade. And uh, the BIOS version reflects the uh, microcode version and the remote attestation will tell you if the BIOS version is higher enough to um, pa have patched all the vulner known vulnerabilities. So uh, SGX can be used to build a minimum set of your own trust computing base and solve the uh, cloud computing uh, uh, privacy preserving problem. In this picture, there are three parts, the cloud service provider, uh, and the algorithm provider, such as a neural network, and a user who has many, many data. Uh, each of these parts wouldn't trust any of the other two parts because uh, uh, for the uh, neural network, uh, he can't trust cl cloud service provider because cloud service provider would steal the um, trained model from their program and, and he cannot trust user because user can steal, uh, uh, can make arbitrary numbers of que query to their, to their neural network and get the model out. And user, from the user side, the user cannot trust both of them because uh, the user has the data. He cannot trust anyone. And the cloud pro service provider cannot trust both because they can DDoS the 
cloud service. So how to solve it? Um, in, we can use SGS and Clay. Um, the uh, new network could, could be sealed within an, an uh, encrypted SGX enclave and uh, put it on the remote cloud and the users send the, their data to the remote cloud, send directly to the SGX enclave and do the computation there. So everything should be fine. Uh, as a quick summary, uh, SGX is, des uh, is designed to be a high performance memory encryption engine and uh, with the ability to do local and remote attestation. And uh, it's the best choice for my algorithm, your data, whoever CPU is the problem. Um, and it's best choice for SMC. Um, and previously, uh, we have uh, PowerDVD and Wolf, S Wolf SSL who supports um, SGX in their products. The, for the Power DVD, they use SGX Enclave to process the raw video stream directly from the Blu-ray disk and de decrypt, it, decrypt the uh, data stream and output to screen. Uh, for Wolf SSL, it protects the um, TLS, TLS session data, session master key in SGX Enclave. And yeah, that's how they use SGX. Uh, so this is easy to, for you guys to understand because uh, in C or C++ code, there are always buffer flows, use of freeze, uh, memory cor corruption, vulnerabilities, and uh, SGX code does need memory safety because SGX is designed to process privacy and sensitive data. So SGX definitely needs memory safety guarantees. So, um, I start uh, research in SGX and want to solve the uh, memory safety guarantees in an, an innovation way, which uh, applies new technology of program language to the SGX programming model. So I tried three different languages, the Golang, Rust, and Swift. Um, first, I look into Golang. Mm, I've tried my best to uh, understand how Golang works, but I found that Golang requires everything, uh, every process as a uh, Go routine, and it keeps switching between the Go routines and the uh, so-called Go machine in a in a Go um, uh, Go. Uh, what's a P? It's a Q. Yes, it's a job queue. It's dynamically scheduling cannot be implemented in SGX because inside SGX, we cannot make these calls, cannot decide whether or not we sh myself should get, uh, get off the CPU. So uh, Go is almost impossible for SGX. And for Swift, um, personally, I, I don't like the foundation, core foundation part of Swift because it contains too much C and C++ code. Uh, I hate I hate that, so I choose Rust, and uh, in fact, it's the best choice in, in my in my life. So, um, <laughs> thank you. So in the past, what Intel provide us is that um, Intel says that every part could be written in C or C++, but with our work, we can use Rust for gram the untrusted app and the enclave. For the context switch, uh, they, are, they are the foundation libraries provided by Intel, and I don't want to waste their efforts because they have plenty of uh, experienced engineers working on that. So um, if, if, I do, if I work do some work on that, I, I cannot guarantee that I can upgrade it according to the Intel uh, engineer's work. So I, I plan to build everything on top of the Intel SGX account switch libraries. Uh, so uh, here comes another question. In the past, uh, the application is an a entire application. We never split it to two parts. But now we have to split it to two parts, the, the untrusted part and trusted parts, where the trusted part components cannot make Sys calls and can only 
execute in um, a limited size of memory. So this is a key question. We, we need partition. Um, yeah, by myself. So um, that's a key question. And I, whenever I talk partition, the concept to uh, developers in Baidu, they, they say that I, I don't want to know these details. These are a burden to me. So um, I don't know how to talk to them, but I think you guys may understand. I have to, everyone who wants to write an SGX application, he needs what secret he wants to protect and uh, what code uh, should be guaranteed uh, for its integrity. That, that's a key question. So uh, let's assume that we have a, a, a correct partition for now. So after the partition, how do we assemble them together? So you know, it is easy to understand. Um, for the untrusted app, we just build, build it together with our SGX untrusted runtime service, create and link together with libsgx underscore un, uh, untrusted runtime service dot A and some other stuff. Uh, for the trusted part, it is a, a static library because SGX does not support dynamic loading, so every, everything is linked statically. Um, we build our uh, SDK um, as a set of uh, static libraries, and, and the developers read their own SGS enclaves and generated a lib enclave.a. We link everything together as a shared object and use the SGX sign tool by Intel and provide a signing key and f finally create a signed ISO. And, uh, the very first beginning, I, I successfully support the uh, Intel SGX API uh, by directly wrapping the, uh, their APIs with Rust interface. And uh, here is a simple, uh, a simple stack, which uh, depend, finally depends on Intel's SDK. Yeah, so here, here is a key question is that on the, on the top, there are Rust creates, which guarantees memory safety. But at the bottom, the Intel SDK, they do not. They're written in C and C++. So how do we guarantee the memory safety of the entire program? Um, the, the answer is no. We, we cannot guarantee 100 memory safety. But we propose the principles of hybrid memory safe architecture with th three uh, rules, rules of thumbs. Um, uh, for s simply, they are, uh, the basic idea is that the unsafe or memory unsafe components should be small and should be a drop-in upgradable, and uh, it should has a clear boundary uh, between un memory unsafe and the memory safe modules. Uh, yes, uh, this is the principles proposed by my boss the chief security scientist and distinguished architecture of Baidu. Yeah, and, and, and I believe um, to use memory safety guarantees in the production, uh, we, the only thing we can do is that we guarantee this principle, uh, apply this principle to the existing products and uh, replace the modules by memory safe modules one by one, and finally achieve uh, best security guarantees. So, Next, finally, we come to the print line sample. Um, so the steps is easy. Um, first, I need the partition. For the first uh, step of partition, I need to define the boundary. It is defined using a EDL syntax defined by Intel, very similar to C. And, uh, and the first line is untrusted, which uh, says that it's a O call function. Uh, which, which is enables the, the code inside SGS enclave make outside call to the, uh, to the untrusted world, uh, right to the um, STD out, and get back to the trusted world. And inside the trusted codes, I can uh, expand the macro. Uh, actually, I copy the codes from libstd to SGX TSDD, and uh, finally implement such a, such a function 
and uh, such a uh, structure, uh, very almost the same as the libSPD. And finally, after across the uh, boundary of um, trusted and untrusted, uh, the, in the untrusted world, the, the code value is very much simple. Yes. So put everything together. Um, in, inside the enclave, I implement the, the macro and define the, the, the edge and uh, finally implement the, the O call. So the most challenging part is the STD is too, too much large and that takes us about uh, half a year to, for this create. Um, the challenge here, I selected part of the challenges here. Uh, for example, threading. Uh, as you can see from the previous slides, SGX does not has a isolated threading mechanism. Uh, the eCall function is treated as uh, something like block syscall, and it does not has a threading model. It only has a threading policy, which decide on each eCall whether or not you get the same in enclave uh, TCB. So, um, and another uh, challenge is from the libc side. Intel's libc is quite small because it support it doesn't support too much Cisco, uh, to, uh, any syscall. So it, it only has a very limited set of uh, features. And uh, SGX, um, it supports a uh, weird or, or something like vectorized exception handling mechanism, very di different from Rust. So um, challenges are a, a lot. They are, these are only four I listed. And I will use exception as an example uh, to show how we port the libstd to SGX. Uh, so exception, uh, exception in SGX is quite uh, complex, but uh, it's very very similar to to the operating systems exception. It will first use a trampoline to trap to OS, to OS kernel and deal with the OS deal with the, such as page fault and get back to the enclave. Um, one example is that in SGX enclave, there is no CPU ID instruction. If, if we execute such an instruction, it will trap a fault and to, to the OS. And if we register such a, such a exception handler, and uh, it will transfer the control, control flow to our registered handler and mm, do the, um, hand, uh, handles, the, handles the CPU ID instruction and get back to the enclave and continuous execution. So this is entirely different from Rust exception. So uh, from the Rust side, um, it, the exception is, is triggered from either panic or assertion. And I just expand the routines here. Um, in the uh, abort settings, it can directly make calls to RSGX abort function, which abort immediately. And uh, if, if we try to handle that panic, uh, we need to uh, finally force to the thread local macro, which requires thread local storage. And uh, that's, that's the key part of the implementation. We uh, re-implement the thread local macro by copy codes from libstd to SGX TSTD, line uh, function by function by function until the threads local key inner function. And from there, we need to implement the SGX specification set. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I, I implemented s several structures and their uh, methods. And finally, it, it invokes, make an FFI calls to the SGX, uh, Intel SGX APIs, and get a thread data. And it returns such a data structure and within uh, with two areas indicate the TLS area. And in this way, we support thread local storage and, uh, and uh, finally the, the entire uh, routine works. So another example is SGX mutex. Mm, in Linux, 
the mutex implement implementation will finally fall to uh, libc's pthread mutex. But in SGX, we don't have pthread. So Intel provides an alternative solution in uh, named as SGX thread mutex. So I implement the re-implement the mutex.rs and uh, which uh, calls to the SGX thread mutex init. We finally make FFI calls to the uh, Intel APIs. In this way, uh, we we uh, implement mutex as SGX mutex. The reason why I didn't uh, directly name as mutex is that I want programmers to know that they are using Intel's mutex instead of common pthread mutex. So um, that's, that's how the libstd works. So next, um, I will tell you guys how to port existing projects to Rust SGX and protect your data and privacy. But before that, I want, to, I want you guys to know, before port anything, we need to partition it. For example, I, when I partition uh, port the Russell, I have to partition the Russell framework, put the uh, synchronized I/O out of the uh, into the untrusted world, and put everything synchronized in the trusted world. And um, yeah, um, every everybody should do the partition uh, before he start uh, coding. Um, after he partitioned the uh, application, uh, the first thing is to import the STD. Um, I, uh, for now, we support either the, both the cargo settings and the X argo, I don't know how to pronounce. In Chinese, we call it chargo because X stands for char. So, but, but no, uh, whatever. So in cargo settings, um, it is a no STD environment the create is named as SGX TSTD, and all, what you need to do is to extern create as SGX TSTD as STD and add another uh, prelude include in, as a header. And uh, it supports Rust stable and Rust nightly. Uh, but in X, uh, X Argo, uh, it's a, the environment does include STD. So, the create is different with, with name std and version number 0.0.0. .0. And, it's, and uh, it, it has a customized sys root. And it supports nightly only because X, XArgo only support nightly. But we want uh, the asterisk enclave be stable. So we hacked that X, XArgo and shipped with a customized XArgo with our uh, code project. And uh, uh, for SGX features in Rust SGX, we support both the Linux side, for example, the Linux file system access, we support them. And Intel provides another called SGX file system, that's a encrypted file system, and uh, we support them both. Before you decide to use the um, uh, uh, file system, you have to choose between the Linux file system and the SGX file system. So this happens to time, which Linux time or the SGX time. SGX time is guaranteed to, to be true from Intel ME mechanism. Um, and here I listed some of the masterpieces uh, of Rust SGX. Uh, first, I list the creates supported by myself. Mm. Uh, for example, <laughs> The Rusty machine, uh, because um, at the early stage of this year or last year, people are talking about AI, and I port part. Uh, I select one uh, famous machine learning library called Rusty machine. It has a clean dependency with an, uh, a, a linear algebra uh, create. Uh, I can I can port. And that makes a sec made, made a success. And the second, I port uh, the Russell set to SGX and provide the code samples to show how to create um, a uh, 
TLS server and TLS uh, client in SGX and use SGX to protect the TLS uh, context. And then someone write email to me, say that I need portal valve, okay? Uh, and I port the portal valve to SGX. So portal valve are related to some partitions um, because part of the portal valve should be implemented in the untrusted world and a part of the portal valve should be work in the trusted world. Um, and for 30, it's, the, uh, I, uh, it's one of my favorite create. And uh, personally, I wouldn't use Rust portal buff for serialization, I would use 30. And uh, finally, last week, I made the WebAssembly interpreter work perfectly in SGX. And uh, that's what I believe will be success in near future. And uh, some winning stories. Um, in last year, I, pre, um, I participated in the iDash competition hosted in the US, and the CEA from France won the trophy in iDash 17, um, and they successfully compressed the 30 gigabytes of genome data to uh, hundreds of me megabytes and uh, transfer it to the uh, SRX Enclave, a uh, lock-free a hash map, and finally, the, the size of the hash map is only seven gigabytes, even less than the L3 cache of, of the processor, and the process, they process the 30 gigabytes of data within seconds. Of, uh, uh, I remember it's seven seconds. So they won the trophy, and they built their application on the Rust SGX framework. And uh, this is the first winning story of Rust SGX they beat a set of, a bunch of teams using C and C++. And uh, another so a winning story is from my uh, previous uh, lab at UC Berkeley. And they poured a uh, entire uh, Ethereum VM called Sputnik the EVM to the SGX Enclave and write a smart contract uh, protocol, the consensus, consensus mechanism they implement, uh, they implement correctly and make the uh, smart contract system work perfectly on SGX, uh, Rust SGX. And uh, uh, at last, I, last week, I finally make it work, make the WebAssembly interpreter works in SGX Enclave, which means that um, I can put the WST uh, WebAssembly to the s Enclave and, and uh, send some uh, execution requests to the WebAssembly interpreter, and it can calculate, the, uh, evaluates the results, and returns to, returns to the untrusted world, or either send it to remote using um, secure layer transportation. And uh, it will be a, uh, 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 a winning story because SGX in the past can, is designed to uh, build a customized s a set of uh, trust computing base, but with the help of WebAssembly interpreter, it can execute every popular language because every popular compiler uh, can generate WebAssembly as a target platform. So we can run everything in SGX Enclave now. Uh, so here is the summary. Um, and uh, I have some problems left behind. First is cargo test. SGX has a different system settings, so it does not support cargo test. And uh, for Chargo, it cannot support Rust stable. And uh, for AI guys, they need a high performance blast create, but we don't have one. And yeah, I, I need to better manage my versioning on, on Chris.io. So thank you. That's all my talk.